Hi. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm making a, a remake uh, of the video I just made before. I've been watching my videos and I uh, am realizing that I'm really bad at this and I um, can't. I'm not delivering any understanding. Um, I'm starting to see how I. Um, I'm becoming, I'm getting projected and what I'm perceived, what my dissertation is perceived like and I have no skills. Um, I'm going to basically take the advice of of teachers I've had in the past and uh, learn from looking at other people and uh, just keep trying it, keep working at it, keep working at it until it comes out right. So with this video, I'm going to substitute the one that I made before. But since it came out so long and different uh, to what I originally had in mind, um, I'm going to call it what it is. And so I'm going to cover in this chapter two things. Um, one is a an instrument of critical analysis, critical thinking, um, and I've called it, um, what did I call it, oh, um, the uh, I call this realization of critical thinking, foundational, foundation reconstructive analysis, I messed up already, okay, uh, foundation of reconstructive analysis. And the other thing I'm going to cover is, are the three um, developmental development lead areas of Gaia humanism. Uh, the, 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 uh, basically, the, ma the matrix, the structure for its development of, uh, and growth of this um, social, political uh, school of thought. Um, okay, so um, foundation, foundation reconstructive analysis Foundation reconstructive analysis basically refers to identifying and finding those moments in our social knowledge and our cultural knowledge about the world um, where suddenly they discover that uh, they have something completely wrong and it kind of changes everything. It changes what everything everybody believed um, about dinosaurs, let's say. And it kind of ends at that. When these things happen, when they suddenly find out that everything they thought about uh, something at a certain point, I should be specific, um, is wrong, it leads you immediately to think, uh, well, that means that all these other things that derived from that which we believe, that, for example, it was good to treat children a certain way, and it, it has always been um, um, old school to punish and reprimand, uh, call the parents if the kid didn't get good votes and then now they're realizing that if you encourage the child and if you have them be happy in class with the rest of his uh, peers that they're much more willing and uh, to learn and they retain more and they remember more and they get more excited about learning stuff out of their own initiative and when something like this is learned in in social general social knowledge in a country, let's say, or in a society. And if you can imagine yourself talking about it with people on the streets, um, they just read it in a magazine or something, immediately everybody kind of shares in that conversation that w what that what they understand, that immediately that changes uh, a bunch of other aspects of education and therefore we may all start talking about some of the repercussions it has, but it kind of tapers off at that. 
Um, well, I've uh, come to understand that these um, these um, instant these um, points of critical flaw that we discover later in time or in history, because we may go on believing something wrong for a long time, uh, permeate all that we know and everything that we may think about the world, how everything is, uh, any subject you want to talk about, people's, um, what we believe about people, what we think about different aspects of the world, are, is just a pl full, full, uh, a plethora of these aired uh, points of knowledge upon which uh, we build uh, the world that uh, as it came afterwards as we built it later um, so I've called these foundational reconstruct I've, I've called these uh, flaws foundational uh, failures I guess I just made that up right now because the instrument the the critical thinking instrument uh, I called it foundational reconstructive analysis and why it needs to be identified is well like I said because we're full of stuff like we believe things about uh, what sexuality countries war um, animals animal uh, how we treat animals how we treat uh, wives how we treat our children how uh, we treat people who are employees, how we treat our students, um, how to, we think of government uh, people and how government thinks of the citizenship. I mean, everything that has to do with our beliefs in, in values and moral structure of reasoning is full of things that we've concluded at some point uh, is true or is the way it is. And upon that, we build... Um, the world that we believe and when we find that we were all along wrong about something um, it only changes it only changes uh, it starts changing some of the uh, the repercussions it, that came of it because of it but we really don't know we don't see it as as the whole tree of ramifications that it had onto the whole world that we in its all in all of its expanse in all that it extended to into how we built the world later we just kind of say oh well we didn't know that and we dismiss it instead what I want to do is identify it because they're all over the place like we didn't know they existed they're all over uh, our, our history rather not all over the place but all over the places of of thinking of the world it doesn't make any sense so um, and why it's important to to see it because is uh, the reason it's important to see it is because the world we have come to understand how we have built it everything that has was built on top of what we believed before and as we learned based on what we belie believed was true and in, in, in understanding morals and values are like um, a, a building basically and when we get it wrong, when we believe, for example, that, um, let's say, let's make a simple, uh, dumb example, like it actually, women were the ones responsible for something in the family, usually, typically, and all along we believed it was men, or we didn't know one of the two actually uh, was the one that the children the family counted on for something everything that we uh, later turned into institutions school reasons and logic m moral justifications for who does what in institutions that later became um, this is so difficult it's so hard to explain properly uh, are like a building that gets starts shifting slowly because the the foundational uh, footing was misplaced was not on the where it actually is 
in truth, in, 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 in creational truth. Um, and so everything that, because it wasn't placed in the right place, um, it's not that the column that rises from there is off. It's more like it starts leaning over and the more things that we build on top of it, the more we have to compensate for its leaning. And so it gets shoved even further the other way in order to keep it from toppling. And, um, and, and this results in the form of our civilization. So by identifying a uh, points of critical error in our, uh, our um, thinking about civilization, about the things that matter and what is true, where they belong, um, we by uh, anyways, okay. So that's one thing that I want, that instrument of critical thinking, this is terrible, it's worse than the first one. <laughs> Okay, and this, the other one is um, the three areas uh, that lead the development of Gaia humanism. Um, and um, the way I wrote it here in this, this presentation is the three development lead areas, meaning the three areas that are responsible, not are responsible, but are in, in, in which these these three things happen flaw and failure recognition of an analysis flaw and failure recognition and analysis <laughs> okay. I'm gonna chuck this one forget it okay flaw and failure recognition and analysis truth peace and healing concept creation building and transformation in other words it is a, a political philosophy it's a, 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 a a social uh, rationale based on new principles, new understandings, new orders of um, organizing uh, the hierarchy of thoughts and and uh, de the development, the structuring of reasoning. And so, if it's going to function as a as a political philosophy or a political party with its own principles and uh, it's its course, its helm, its its keel, <laughs> and its uh, movement in, a, in a, with a goal in mind. Um, it's got to be aware of uh, where it's cutting the water. Is do it's doing these three things? It's um, analyzing and recognizing and analyzing flaw and failure. In other words, we're not supposed to be putting our children in jail. <laughs> if, if a kid is 12 years old, he's not supposed to go to grown-up jail. He's supposed to go to a, a place where there's adults, where they, they bring him in here, and they, they, they make up as best they can for the next five years. They repair whatever the parents were doing wrong or, or the society was doing wrong with him. But uh, So we identify the... Um, the, we recognize the failure and the flaw. Truth, peace, and healing, which means creating a space for push everything away. We know what we're doing. Truth from the, the heartache and the suffering of that child uh, and stop to, the, stop to the failure, stop to the suffering, stop to doing things wrong and start on the healing. Concept creation. Concept creation, building, and transformation, which is basically conceiving how we're going to do things. What, who's going to be the surrogate mom, dad? What are we going to teach the child? How we're going to get him to realize self-awareness and see as best we can for a child that he was walking in the wrong place and look at how wonderful actually he is inside and how wonderful the world is and start um, uh, transforming and building what later would be, for example, uh, a, a house for children that are that get in trouble and uh, who are abandoned by the parents, uh, drug addicts, what have you, uh, not foster parents, but in re substituting what right now is jail, okay? We're not talking about creating an institution, a new institution. We're talking about transforming what exists. 
So instead of the child going to jail, we uh, have a place that he would go. Because he's still a child, because it's uh, a living form that is still in a uh, developmental healing capacity. You know, when it's absurd to put a child in jail when, um, when like, a, like a tender plant, if you ever grew, uh, if you ever worked in a nursery, you know that when a, a tree is growing, uh, if you slightly uh, cut it, it will have a huge scar when it grows to, when it's a little seedling and you cut it, it will have a huge scar when it grows to be a tree. So by the same token, our, our, the, the, the gift of our high intelligence also would find a way that just as effectively intense healing on what was starting to be a little cut in that seedling corrects what would be a gash, what would have been a gash as a grown tree much more effectively than when the tree's already grown and there's, you know, well, thank God we're not trees because some things you can't, you can't change about trees. But, um, and so uh, this is the basic structure of uh, Gaia humanism. Um, the, f the flaw and failure recognition, flaw and failure recognition and analysis, truth, peace, and healing, and concept creation, building, and transformation. So I was going to explain those things, and I was going to explain the concept of foundation reconstructive analysis, uh, which is a, a critical thinking tool that helps us um, see, basically, um, give it a, a defining, I don't want to say label, but an understanding of this as an element of understanding civilization that when we find, uh, when we discover that we had something completely wrong, uh, it, we just don't let it go there. We know that there are to be found a whole bunch of repercussions that like that spread out like the roots of a tree upwards um, that affected everything. We start seeing, well, that now see, that's why this is handled that way, and that's why we believe that in this other area, and that's why... Uh, we've been always talking that other way about this other thing because we followed all the repercussions that critical error led to. So it's necessary to identify these misplacements uh, in, uh, in past beliefs so that uh, we take it... Uh, so it's critical to have an identity, an identification of these mis mistakes made by social logic, uh, let's call them, because we ought to know, and therefore by giving it a name, we will know that they, uh, uh, that we ought to, s we ought to find all the places that it misaffected, and it, it twisted things, it skewed things, it made, gave us the wrong conclusions about other things that derived from it, which right now we're not doing, because right now when we discovered we have something wrong, we had something wrong in the past, um, we uh, we just kind of don't think uh, it really affected much. We stop thinking, in, in other words. Okay, so <coughs> that's supposed to be uh, supposed to be a short introduction. But what I'm going to talk about next, we'll use, we'll make examples of um, foundation and reconstructive analysis, uh, basically. Okay, I just remembered because I, I, I moved the video and saw the title that I gave the video and now I know the three areas that Foundation Reconstructive Analysis was going to talk about and they are the real definition of war, incarceration, and homosexuality. I forgot to mention this. The, th the three areas of, um, the three aspects, the three f stages, I'm sorry, the three stages that Gaia hum humanism or the development of Gaia humanism would work through flaw, failure, recognition, analysis, truth, peace, and healing, consecration, building, and transformation 
work along work along vertical uh, three vertical pillars along these vertical pillars um, we find the development and civilization of our most intense how can this is really hard to explain I haven't cons uh, haven't thought about yet how to explain it um, so I'm just going to call it the real definition of war, incarceration, and homosexuality. More or less, vaguely, I'm going to try to... I'm not supposed to, if I'm improving the way I do this, I'm not supposed to uh, improvise it. I'm supposed to be more structured and not go, um, 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 but I have to do it. <laughs> okay. War, they're the most intense, um, most egregious extremes most uh, representative of the failing of civilization and the failing of civilization you you cannot lose from sight that it is contextualized it's contextualized in that we as a whole collective as a whole thinking of the the big we always reasoning we would do this for ourselves and this happens to us uh, not looking for individuals or groups to start comparing or judging but always always maintaining a contextually a reasoning that that um, stands on a perspective of we always and so uh, that being said you can understand how war is one of our most egregious uh, it's, there should be humor to this but I, I don't know how to deliver it yet because we have to have humor and grace in a work that it really we should be crying about <laughs> because we have we have had an amazing capacity as a species for 10,000 years and all we have done is kill our children and, and made people leave the earth without having lived at all and suffered and tortured you know and so we should be crying but so in order to bear in order to bear this tragedy that has been human civilization necessarily we must have the strength of humor and grace believe it or not if it lands and is aligned with truth because you know that it's good news and so grace and humor uh, is justified because you're happy that you're finally out of this of that error of that so it's okay to have uh, humor and grace um, when talking about some of the most incredibly intensely uh, horrific or egregious or tragic things that we now may identify or talk about that said war is one of them because we uh, we basically hurt ourselves it's like um, you know there's not much to explain in 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 a lot of uh areas when when you are standing always on the the greater pronoun of we uh it's actually a simple explanation i'm left sometimes wanting to say more because i don't know why but maybe i'll make an effort uh we destroy our own our own productions, our own beauty, our own world, our own children. We torture our our mothers. Our uh, we neglect and we're horrible. War is a horrible thing that the species does to itself. Incarceration is dumb. That's why I want. I, I brought up uh, laughter and and human grace. War is also stupid. Incarceration is stupid, and homosexuality is stupid. The three things are stupid now we don't understand if I say homosexuality 99% of the world will th think a bunch of things that are already settled and and established uh, and it will not be simply and effortlessly seen as a stupidity something dumb that humanity uh, does sexually with its own with its own body um, but it's not judgmental and incarceration perhaps uh, is 
more seriously stupid because we're ignoring that we have we're like uh, an amazing living creation that can regenerate its own organs can regenerate its own skin um, heal its wounds um, recuperate from a from a devastating illness and become an Olympic champion perhaps this wondrous capacity of the human body is not absent in the brain it is just as present in the brain we don't understand it obviously because we we fall short we just don't know what to do and we throw people in a in a concrete box it's probably one of the stupidest most unbeholding of the grace that is life uh, and the wonder that are is uh, the capacity of, of mankind uh, more I, okay so these three things and these three columns Homosexuality has more to do with two things, basically our biological environment, our actual chemical uh, biological reality to the, the, this body, this physiology, but primarily uh, has, it has a lot to do with, uh, it's a resultant, it's like a symptom. And we, in science we're okay with, with, uh, with identifying animals that start you know they come out of the egg with a kind of like loft sided and starting to think they're the opposite gender because of something we did to them in the lab but when it comes to humanity we're not that comfortable and we don't want to own up to the fact that a lot of homosexuality has to do with how we're raised and how we're affected by our relationship it's all been laid out already actually but and you know but you say freud these days and it's like you know they kill you so uh, <laughs> you, know, you can't. You, you gotta watch out with homosexuality because they they want to hang you if you if you don't uh, throw a party. You know, it's just crazy. But at the same time, it's kind of harmless. It is natural. There's homosexuality. Homosexuality is not a thing. It's something that that human beings do. It's something that the that human sexuality can express. It's not a thing. It's not something that happens to uh, to uh, some people not others and it's funny because we've been flirting with that but it is an already identified gay community that seems to want to talk about it that way but then they don't and they go back and they say it's not an illness you know it's it's natural it's about love and you're like yeah 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 that's true it's love healing itself it's love recognizing it's your own that you didn't quite find yourself and, and, and grow up girthy and, and robust in your belonging to your peers and to your gender and so it continues to keep wanting to grow up except you passed adolescence already that all has to do with the, with the psychological part um, and it's fused it actually has three areas um, biological social cultural and psychological psychological personal development family so almost to understand homosexuality you have to understand that it's a fusion it's the togetherness it's the oneness it's it must be understood as three simultaneous areas um, so, social psychological uh, social sociological cultural meaning what society says it's okay because we learn sexuality mainly from others. We don't go ask our parents how to have sex. We learn it from the world. So, um, so sociological, cultural, social, it, it will give us a whole bunch of uh, material from which that will become what we become. And so if society is applauding and giving parades and you're unhappy and lonely and you find yourself that everybody's uh, cheering you on when you get on the float at Gay Pride, you know, it will have an effect. Okay, so there's um, there's that. There's biological chemical, which we already are uh, exploring a lot, of course, based on things that we want to find. And so it's, in any case, um, not based on a, a simultaneous... Uh, we're not looking and studying homosexuality with this principle of three areas joined in it in a single okay okay together simultaneously and 
the third the other part is psychological how we develop inside how we develop inside will have everything to do with how starting with how we were treated before we can uh, we uttered words by our mother by our siblings by our father and that will start forming who we are and then the reactions when we start expressing ourselves and the, the forming formative psychological areas okay anyways incarceration is the failure of society we selfish horrible we 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 get it wrong we miseducate all this stuff all that we're attempting to um is not done yet and so instead of realizing society that well you know that these people are have strayed like that uh, you know there there may be a, an area an independent area of spirituality which is sort of what religions only focused on you know you have to be more compassionate you have to be a better person and understand that that poor young man was just trying to be like his dad and he thought he had to prove himself to the gangsters and so he went and killed somebody okay but it can only go so far that's the problem with religion religion doesn't really understand humanity and human nature religion has always just tried to do this behave more like this turn the other cheek don't think about it you know make a blank out of your head <laughs> whatever it is it it helps but it didn't understand how we are as as human beings that's why it's called Gaia humanism so incarceration basically is a horrible thing we we don't want to assume that we're responsible as a society for the people that we raise for the children that we raise and there you go what we do we just we we can't be the perfection that religious wants us to be and, and forgive 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 unconditionally uh, of course not uh, and so what we were missing is what society is capable of doing collectively to heal its individuals, its people. And therefore, uh, what we have known as religions so far would simply maybe make it a little easier, turn down the lights a little bit so it's not so, you know, not so stark. Uh, but in reality, the work has to do with understanding how we heal, how we recuperate, how uh, a person realizes what he done and feels bad about how awful he was being to others and he starts learning to see himself better and that you know religion doesn't teach you how to do that so but in the brain there is a uh, natural redemption we know it since since, since tribal days you it's, elders knew that uh, you could get somebody to the point where he feels so loved and understood for what happened to him not forgiven forgiven comes you know the, we have become very poor in that whole area among other things what comes first what happens later you know but basically what allows natural redemption to happen is first you're apprehended correct first you're apprehended when you're apprehended the first thing the human mind does is is looks out to see if they know what they're what i'm doing if they know what i did if it wasn't they know that i'm the one that stole of course, the first thing you we do is we talk about it secretly, and then we give dirty looks to that person, and so that person goes even down further because he feels worse. All this that that worseness joins all the reasons that made him do that. Uh, instead, the person what was really happening that we missed completely altogether is that that person was looking first up to see if somebody will save him if he can be understood, if somebody remembers him. These are spiritual. This is spiritual language. It's not that we don't have the language in religions. Um, and uh, so the tribals uh, used to uh, say to that person that stole or hurt somebody or maybe killed somebody, I don't know, whatever happened in New Guinea and in tribal times, uh, <laughs> goes reaches out and says I knew you from when you were a kid and I saw what happened to you and now the person that looks up to see if somebody can save him or understand him finds hope and at that moment that he knows that he was recognized for not meaning to do what he did he crumbles inside and he he realizes because 
recognition. Nobody really wants to hurt and 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 do harm and kill or or rob. No, truly, we want to belong first and foremost. And therefore, because we want to be a collective and belong and be integrated before we are uh, our will has its way as an individual, precedence will always be in our hearts to having been uh, re-included, forgiven, understood. So natural redemption is a possibility and is a scientific, philo not philosophical, it's a human science. Religion can help a little bit and some religions can help a lot more, but really we need to understand psychology and uh, the psychology of healing, the psychology of individual healing thanks to the forces of society, of social inclusion, of the, uh, yes, the love of others, but we have to actually break it down and talk about it um, for actions, precise, specific actions, not just values of kindness and compassion, but if uh, we're always going to be stuck in the same problem if we do that. We have to be able to understand the workings of, uh, of human behavior as far as society uh, pulling back into it somebody that is seeking for natural redemption without them even knowing it. Okay, and war. Okay, so war is the one that we've always been clear about, but now we're so lost. <laughs> we're so lost that we're... You know, it's so funny because it seems to be of, of the three pillars of Gaia humanism, Gaia's uh, war needs seems to be the one that we've most had it clear that it's not what humanity wants and it's a scourge of civilization and yet we seem to be doing less and less towards um, ridding ourselves of it. So um, I got to go look for that term again. Foundation reconstructive analysis has to do with um, with what has to do with with these three areas. Foundation reconstructive analysis just applied to what I talked about incarceration because it would affirm c certain capacities and capabilities of the natural healing mind that we just didn't really give much importance, didn't know that in the same area we concluded wrongly on certain points and assumed things that led to believe uh, people will always be messed up uh, and there's uh, they're always going to be screwed up whatever and but so when you move a point the the, the footing of of uh, of one of uh, an element a point of uh, foundation foundation failure, I guess. I haven't found a good term for that yet. Uh, everything that was built, the jail, the, the, the judgment, the judges, how we judge people, uh, judge, judgment is so, it's one of the most, uh, how can, I don't want to say ignorant because it's just too general, um, mis un misunderstood um, because really, if you're going to bring justice, and we purport justice as, as if it's some grand authority that we're able to deliver, if you really want to bring justice to a person's actions, you would have to understand what was unjustly done to that person for which they reacted or believed they needed to do something that was unjust against somebody else. Right now we're treating people like they were, uh, like God sent us to look for the culprits. You know, go get the ones that mess up and punish them, throw them in, them, throw them in a box of fire, you know. Instead of understanding judgment, which judges the actions and the suggestions and the effects and the influences and the reactions that are of social origin and of development, of bringing, upbringing, uh, so, were our court system to be socially intelligent, it would understand how this, this blob of s human society works uh, among all its billions of little points of each human life, how it works, the whole of us. It wouldn't be judging one person before another one or others and how they interacted between 
two or three or ten people, you know. It would be understanding what happened to this human being in the context of, of the society that he was part of. And so in that sense, our judicial system is, is, is you know, disintelligent compared to the brain it would need to uh, uh, bring good judgment to a person's life. Uh, good judgment to a person's life means that you judge everything that happened around that person's life and understand why you uh, deemed that judge that what they did wasn't what we want as a society, but instead of blaming them, you also understand it by how you judge what others and what life and what the world brought onto that person's life. It's enormous. It's enormous and it's far from where we are right now. Um, so you have also a foundational flaw cases that you would find in, in, uh, in one of the pillars, incarceration, you would find foundational flaw and therefore the, the reconstructive analysis that you would make from it in war. And that is actually where the, the original of these, uh, of this video that I'm trying to substitute started with a comment I made to my friend um, about whether war is natural. So, and I made the point in the older video that war is not natural. It's and I realized that at some point it's natural because you know everything is natural and, and yet that wasn't specific enough I found myself needing to define what is natural because it seems that everything is natural if it's under the stars and we are a creation of the cosmos so um, yet we have to um, establish what is natural and definitely you, you are in a safe area if you start thinking of defining natural as what is conducive to uh, proliferation, health, growth, maturation, um, advancement, emanating, uh, life forthcoming, life healing. Healing is part of, of growth, actually. It's part of the same light force that expands outwards and when it gets scratched with a little meteorite along the way as it departs from the sun it continues going out from its original life source our conception our birth in a healing fashion but it continues outwards um so okay i got lost okay so oh yeah so what if is no is war natural and i gave the example of um, a, a mother that doesn't feed it doesn't doesn't feed her that hides food from her children and um, that's not really what I had in mind. I I wanted to make a you know. There's so many instances where you could say unnatural is that a person consistently does the opposite of what is expected of living or life, and it it. it it's, it wouldn't define unnatural as something contained and completely in reverse or a, a wall before you because uh, we may continue doing unnatural things. So um, in this sense, war isn't natural by this definition because anything that results in killing or, or harming our own offspring anything that results in harming our own offspring in killing them in stunting them and uh, taking it out on them by principle is not good to ourselves and our principle would be to be good to ourselves as a species as a collective first and foremost the whole of the species know how to take care of itself and that the whole of the species knows how to take care of itself must certainly have to do with making sure that our offspring are the first thing that are completely in a safe environment. So the first thing that 
um, sounds the alarm that uh, we are not knowing how to take care of ourselves as a species in the cosmos and the universe is that we're um, yeah some may say that's nothing new <laughs> but you know <laughs> anyways um, um, so in that may answer if it's natural or not it's because otherwise there is no definition for natural uh, homosexuality is more natural than war because homosexuality, even though you're you know you're sticking it in the wrong place and you're you're trying to heal something that you don't understand through uh, finding love with the same gender, which seems to be something that the 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 body does by itself. The mind knows to something; it blindly knows to go seek it where it's the best thing after the mom that it has is another another one like you after you leave the mom only another one like you maybe can continue what seems hopeless at this point after adolescence but it you know life goes forward so uh you go to bed with the same gender maybe you'll find a dad that says hey you know i love you and let's you know how do you feel about that girl huh okay fine let's have sex again <laughs> and then the next day how do you feel about this girl about a girl now no still not okay let's go to bed again <laughs> i don't know something like that but uh, <laughs> um, it still isn't as egregiously unnatural as, uh, and, and see, that definition of homosexuality almost is saying that it is a natural way of going back to go forward. So the definition of natural cannot be very finite. But if you could say more natural than less natural definitely war is more unnatural much more natural than homosexuality and so is incarceration so of the three pillars of Gaia humanism homosexuality is the most harmless one that we just you know can't you see you're not treating yourselves right you know you shouldn't be this shouldn't be happening to you so much maybe it's experiences sporadic experiences a few times or a certain given number in the population and that would be natural uh, but you're not supposed to like, carry on and people only know homosexuality millions only know homosexuality for their whole lives no 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 something's happening to you guys you're not you're not raising it you're not treating your children right but all in all it's the most harmless one of the three pillars um, incarceration is just stunting stunting and, and uh, cruel and selfish and it exhibits um, so all three pillars exhibit qualities and this is where the fun part starts guys that um, you find areas in which now you can take words that apply to one words that apply to the other and words that apply to the other one uh, it speaks of parts of our psyche of our personality of uh, and is if you had to find one word for example that says the f the failure of war is about our uh you know our will our greed our our will to overcome and, and take from others or have our way our obstinance you know um incarceration is more selfish cruel um vile you know um homosexuality is kind of silly you know it's like oh god you're just chucking your life away aren't you so you you can find uh areas that can start taking form they can start taking and of course so we're talking about the three let me see how much time at least if i make it less than an hour not more than the other one uh, I did. Da 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 da. Call it realization. Failure. Okay. Flaw. Failure. Recognition. Uh, we covered that. Uh, I just covered that. Uh, truth. Peace and healing. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. In in our case, in cases that are you're a Gaia humanist political activist, it would involve more. Don't kill me because I said that. Uh, homosexuality is not the optimal expression for a person's life. Peace. You know, let it be okay. Let it be okay that these poor, ignorant, 
uh, ignorant, ignorant people in, in, in some countries are hanging poor men that are just in need of love and, and or jailing them, you know? Stop. Stop the, the left, right, left, right, left, right thing. Um, so, da 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 da. Truth, uh, truth, peace, and healing. So, it, you know, it's okay. Relax. You know, we, we, nature was doing this. Don't freak out. In the case of incarceration, uh, immediately becomes in anger. Find lawyers that can question and prove how f how ridiculous the system is failing and incarcerating innocent people. In the case of war, well, you might as well put a helmet on and and and, uh, and stand in, and stand in the way of any soldier approaching a child. Uh, any pick a country um, in in a mile radius. So it becomes the scales there all of a sudden become very distant one from from each other. Concept creation. This is the most, finally, you know, the part where we get to sit down calmly and um, building and transformation. We say, well, this is what would heal. This is what would work. And then healing, after peace, truce, and healing, comes the, 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 the working, the sort of where the, the new skin starts getting built and the wound starts, getting, starts closing up. The building of a, of, a, of a, a reparative, but on the principles of Gaia humanism, of what is true, what actually the body has been telling us, nature has been telling us, this is how I would do it if I had your brain. <laughs> and, um, and then it leads to what will substitute, um, because order exists, ultimately, we, we, we have, we're numerous, we're billions, we have to have government, administration, except that it would be benevolent, it would understand humanity instead of looking for to separate and punish. <laughs> it would be something that administrates us, and maybe, yeah, maybe sometimes you gotta turn up, we need a little bit of turning up the flame, you know, on underneath somebody so they move their butt. I mean, there, it's not, people think utopia, you know, that uh, uh, this kind of thought would resemble those people that talk about utopia. Uh, no, no, we are, kind of, you know, we're uh, in a state of constant uh, unbalance. We're not in a perfect state. We're, we have an animal base, simian, human, and maybe it's not simian, it's a category that we haven't found yet but it existed all along in the cosmos but whatever it is it's a it's kind of a you know we have our limitations let's just put it that way but however we also have we're aware of this capacity that's this intelligence that we can make uh you know supersonic airplanes and figure out how life happened on mars so obviously by virtue of us alone compared to any other life form on the planet possess that it isolates it as an identifiable item, call it, a capacity, something that we do, which we have a relationship with as, as this creature of limitations, as our selfishness or impetus, uh, uh, you know, uh, we lose sight, you know, our animal nature, they call it. Uh, I'm sure we should come up with better words. Uh, has a relationship with this gift that is our outstanding intelligence. And that relationship creates a state of imbalance. It's bigger than us. It's like God's or Creator's uh, put on us. Here, boom, have this. Have you ever like given your child uh, more than he can handle? And it's kind of cute. You know, he tries to walk away with it, trying to help Dad with... with uh, with uh, what they're doing in the farm and uh, he can't walk right he was just starting to walk right and now all of a sudden you know he can't keep his balance well that's humanity's constant state because of this relationship the being has with this I call the item intelligence you have to identify it once you identify these two you understand everything gets explained why we have such a hard time 
because we can't, it's more than we can handle. We're challenged. Our human nature is challenged. Our, 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 our animal base is challenged by this capacity, which seems to be have, which seems to have been given to us by a, by a more advanced being that say, okay, look, look at what I'm giving you. Now you should be able to have no more diseases. Don't you want that? You should be able to die beautifully, comfortably, and not fear death. Um, you know, with, with comfort and among your loved ones and satisfied because you'll have designed a world that is so wonderful that you will, you will end your life feeling pleasant. Uh, you will cure all diseases. You won't have hunger anymore. You won't suffer uh, the, the, the collapse of volcanoes on your head anymore because you'll know what's happening underground. Okay? How about that? Not a bad deal, huh? It's all yours. Um, and, but, well, what, the only thing we got to bear, and it's not too much of a price to bear, is this constant state of imbalance. What to do with it? So, Gaia humanism aims, aims at the best way, the best use and the best balance, the best we can do with this unbalanceable predicament, not a predicament from the moment that we realize <laughs> we're lucky, it's a gift that we have, uh, but a situation that will, as far as we're, we, can, we can tell, it will be indefinitely difficult. But if we get it right, it will be a thousand times more, a thousand times better than we have ever known civilization to be. Okay, so there we go. I'm not going to substitute it by the other one. I'm just going to put it side by side. And, uh, and anyways, whatever. Hopefully it will work together. Thanks.